As we recognize International Migratory Bird Day for 2013, we shift our focus to the B-95. The B-95 can feel it, a stirring in his bones and feathers. It's time. Today is the day he will once again cast himself into the air, spiral upwards into the clouds, and bank into the wind, working his newly molded flight feathers for real. After weeks of flight testing, he feels ready. Day by day, he has spent the non-feeding hours during high tide carefully smoothing the barbs on each feather vein to seamless perfection. Now there are no gaps for the wind to pass through and slow him down. He has packed all the fuel he can, gorging on worms, clams, mussels, and tiny crustaceans. His inner GPS is set for north. The whole flock is rippling with anticipation, chattering, waiting for one of them to make the first move. In the next few months, from March to June, B-95 and his flock mates will fly from the bottom of the world to the top, from the land of penguins to polar bear country. He will fly night and day, descending only to visit the regular fueling stations that have sustained him with protein all his life. He will arrive at each stop ravenously hungry, weighing much less than he did just days before. But if the food is there and he can get to it, he will survive, refuel, and fly on. B-95 is a red knot of a subspecies Ruffa, a robin-sized shorebird with streamlined wings that crook at the elbow and taper to a point. In northern spring and summer, his breast and much of his face are colored in brilliant brick red, with reddish feathers sprinkled over his back. During the remainder of the year, his feathers change and his body becomes mostly gray and white. B-95's name and fame comes from the letter and number combination inscribed on an orange plastic flag fastened around his upper left leg. He is a perfectly formed male with a long bill and a powerful chest. Throughout the course of his extraordinarily long life, that's about 20 years, scientists have captured and examined him four times and observed him through binoculars and spotting scopes on dozens of other occasions. Because he is so old and has survived so many difficult journeys, he has become the most celebrated shorebird in the world. But trip by trip, B-95 threads the sky with fewer companions. When he was first banded as a young bird in 1995, scientists estimated there were about 150,000 rufa red knots in existence. Then, around the year 2000, these birds began dying by the thousands. Why, you might ask? Evidence points to abrupt changes in the stopover sites along their great circuit and even in the air through which they fly. A special challenge is the reduction of a very important source of food at Delaware Bay. B-95's plight, and that of Rufa red knots in general, poses one of the great conservation questions of recent years. Can humans and shorebirds coexist? Answers will have to arrive soon, for now experts believe that fewer than 25,000 Rufa red knots remain. That means that more than 80% of the population has disappeared just within B-95's lifetime. This looming shadow of extinction makes B-95's long life all the more improbable. Scientists ask themselves, how can this one bird keep going year after year when so many of his companions drop from the sky or perish on the beaches? B-95's gritty success inspires action a worldwide network of scientists, conservationists, researchers, students and volunteers has sprung up to save Rufa from extinction. Though they are stationed around the world, they team up to follow the knots as they migrate throughout the Western Hemisphere, communicating instantly with new web-based tools. They know they have their work cut out for them, but like B-95 himself, they are determined. As the wind ruffles his new flight feathers and the chattering flock tenses for another season's liftoff, B-95 knows exactly where to go and what to do. But he doesn't know what will await him as he heads north. Will he find the banquet of horseshoe crab eggs he depends on when he arrives starving at Delaware Bay six weeks from now? Does a red tide outbreak like the one who killed so many birds in Uruguay await this flock? Will the skies over the Atlantic Ocean roar with tropical storms that will push him far off course? Will he ever see his Patagonian beach again? The flock stirs. 
the urge to go becomes irresistible and the knots lift as one. Flashing gray and red, hundreds flying in tight formation, spiraling up into the clouds as if controlled by a single will. They take several practice circles together and then rise and bank northward. For B-95 and his companions, it is another season of flight. <laughs>